Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. Today's show is brought to you by PrepareWise. Rough weather's ahead, so it's time to prepare. Your leading source for emergency preparedness food, go to preparewise.com and always use the code LUTS to get free shipping and a whole lot more. You are listening to the Financial Survival I'm Kerry Lutz on 1230 WBZT. And it's time for another Triple Lutz report. This is episode 304. The date is September 18th, 2013. Man, I can't believe it. Time, where does it go? So I wanted to talk a little bit about my trip up to New York. Uh, Relief, divorce, house, gone. No longer an indentured servant in the People's Republic of New York. It's hang up. Overall, it's better. They respect the Second Amendment and there's no income tax. Taxes overall in the state property tax, the local property tax, much lower. So there are benefits. There's drawbacks. I don't want to live down here. But overall, it's better. the effects of inflation. And I got to witness it firsthand really simply by the effects that I saw on my children. Both have apartments in New York City. Now, when I was in law school and college, I had my own place. So one place on 16th Street and 7th Avenue was in Chelsea, just happens to be my daughter's name, was a total dump. And it was... It was a railroad flat that had been split up, first floor. I mean, I don't even think a burglar would have broken into the place. It was and barely had a kitchen. Not that I cooked very much. I mean, it was a filthy place. I don't know how I lived in the place looking back at it because now I'm a kind of a clean freak. Can't stand dirt. But back then, I guess my standards were lower. It was a couple of wives ago, and they kind of set me straight on the on the desirability of cleanliness. I mean, I always kept my body clean, always kept my clothes clean, and just my abode wasn't always up to the standards that I have now. And this place was $235 a month. Now, granted, this was in 1970. Before that, in Jersey City, in an area that was subsequently gentrified, it was $199 per month. Much better apartment. It was a studio apartment with an okay kitchen, not in a great area, but it had parking, and it was right by the Holland Tunnel, right by the PATH train. So now... I look at how much my kids are making and really the apartments that they can afford and there's just no comparison. So they're making far more than I made when I graduated from college and I went to work for the family business. Now, maybe I was getting more than I was probably worth because it was the family business and if there's one thing you can count on your parents to do, It's to pay you a little bit more than you're worth, but not that much more. And I wasn't married yet, didn't have kids yet, but I had an apartment on 40th Street and 2nd Avenue, a large L-shaped studio in a newer building. The rent on it, I think, was $535 a month, which was pretty pricey for that day and age. Now that apartment's got to be closer to $3,000 a month. And... The building was pretty nice. It had a rooftop pool, which at one time I had joined. It was expensive to join that pool, so I didn't stay a member of it for more than a year. It was a beautiful place. 
and wood floors, small kitchen, you know, in a lot of cities like in Florida. apartment and my kids couldn't afford to live in that apartment now on what they're making and they're making a number of times more than what I was making then which is just proof that when inflation hits it drives up the costs of what you need your rent food clothing shelter all that stuff much faster than it drives up the rate of wages which means that the standard of living, you are living, you know, your ability to maintain a standard of living declines. And that's what's happened to my children. And that's what's happened to a lot of you. Me as well, although I've managed to stay a little bit ahead of the curve. And then when you throw in the fact that taxes have gone up, that you've been thrown into a higher tax bracket and so many new taxes have been imposed during that time. Social Security's gone up and disability. All these taxes have gone up during this time. In New York, the taxes haven't gone up as much for uh, all but the wealthy, but you've been driven up into a higher bracket. All of that has served to bring down the standard of living for the middle class. And basically, the amounts that my children are making now, they'd be upper middle class were they not in New York City. In New York City, they're just middle class. Now, their career prospects are probably pretty bright, barring another economic collapse, which to me becomes more probable by the day. But the point here is that I'm looking firsthand, getting to experience the effects the ravages of this money printing of the Federal Reserve, of the effects that it's had on you and my children and myself get to witness it. My kids don't understand it because they don't really know what it was like when I was a student, when you could get by and when you could actually work your way through college. When I was a kid, I could have worked my way through college. I was fortunate my parents had the extra funds to pay for my college out of their disposable income. At that point, people actually could afford to work their way through college and families could actually afford to pay the tuition. Now they can't. And that leads me to the next item, a great site. It's called Wall Street on Parade. Uh, the person who, who's the webmaster, whose site it is, a lady by the name of Pam Martens, if you can, email her, contact with her. I'd love her to come on the show. She's a little uh, uptight about her interviewing skills. She shouldn't be. She is one of the best investigative journalists out there, barring none. I think she's amazing. I think her husband or some relative, Russ Martens, is, is there. This is an incredible site. It's a muckraking site. It would do Sinclair Lewis justice. I mean, and, and she's prolific. She is putting out content articles that you really need to read. Um, let me just read some of the, the headlines recent. Why the defeat of Larry Summers is more about the more is, is about more than the fed. Okay. Well, that's not one that she wrote. Let me give you some that she wrote. JP Morgan gobbles lion's share from federal home loan banks, a program meant to aid small housing lenders. Um, she did a three-part series. Why isn't the Justice Department investigating Citibank's student loan scandal, part one? Um, Citibank student loan debt slaves, part two. Student loan crisis threatens U.S. economic recovery, part three. I mean, she is incredible. She is so, her research is impeccable. She's done research on corruption at NYU. You know, one thing I didn't know is, is that NYU, New York University, has the largest student loan balance out there. I mean, pretty amazing person here. Um, if you can bug her, 
ask her why she won't come on the Financial Survival Network. I'm giving her PR here. I think she's amazing. Um, so talking about this article here, why isn't the Justice Department investigating Citibank student loan scandal? So she's talking about how Citibank uh, got bailed out by the Fed, by the U.S. taxpayer from 08 to 10 with over $2 trillion dollars in equity infusions, asset guarantees, and loans of under 1% interest from the Federal Reserve, and that this far-flung financial enterprise was bailed out despite a serial history of abusing its customers, crimes for which its regulators have imposed huge fines and little justice. And she talks about that the shareholders of Citigroup would be holding worthless stock today if it wasn't for the fact that you and I, the taxpayers, during the Wall Street collapse five years ago, bailed it out. And yet today, based on reports, she says, from coast to coast, the company is engaging in egregious abuses of struggling young college students and graduates who took out private loans from Citibank and they were the preferred preferred lender for NYU. So we all know the story about how Citibank was bailed out, but what they've done to these kids is just out and out criminal. Uh, talks about this gal, Allison L. from Brigo Park. Uh, she said she made over 110 to 125,000 in the past four years, working overtime as a nurse, and she can't keep up the pace anymore. Um, she will have paid her credit card and student loan debt on time for the past 13 years. She's paid $50,000 toward her student loans, but 25000 has gone towards interest. And she'll end up paying at least double on her student loan by the time it's over. And nobody ever explained to her that through the miracle of capitalized interest that she'd be paying all this money and she can't go bankrupt. She can't get out of it. There's nothing she can do. Another woman, Diane A wrote that, uh, under Citibank loan, she's been paying $172 a month for almost three years for a $15,000 loan. And she still owes $15,000. Eric A. wrote that Citibank was comparable to the devil in every way, and Darlene put it even an even more personal face on the program, writing, After 9-11, Citibank offered her a forbearance to residents of New York City, which she stupidly took, if anything, to build up her savings just in case she lost her job, which she did two years later, uh, just after shock and awe and business dropped because of it. And at this time, she took another forbearance and another during the crash of 08 when she lost income again. And she did this to keep her credit rating from falling as it is difficult to obtain an apartment in New York City with any adverse mark whatsoever on your credit report. During this time, Citibank sold her loan to Sally May, who changed the terms Citibank allowed her to pay off the interest uh, if she had it, but Sally Mae does not. Now she owes Sally Mae $45,000, even though she has already paid $35,000 on a loan that was approximately $32,000 when she graduated in 1994. Last year, she took on another job to pay down her debt, which nearly resulted in a nervous breakdown. Should a person be working literally all the time? I mean, this is just incredible. It is totally corrupt. And we're going to talk more about it up next on the Financial Survival Network on this Triple Lutz Report. I'm Kerry Lutz. Hi, it's Kerry Lutz. I recently decided to move my retirement account into physical precious metals to hedge against the coming times. If you want to move an existing retirement account into physical precious metals, 
that you can hold in your hand tax-free. There's no company that can do it more quickly and efficiently than Regal Assets. It took them just 24 hours to open my new IRA account, and all I had to do was fill out one simple form. The best part is that Regal Assets does all the work for you. They cover the setup and administrative costs for 2013. If you're interested in making the same move I did, call 855-678-6620, 855-678-6620, that's 855-678-6620, or visit them at regalassets.com. You'll be glad you did, and tell them Kerry sent you. 1230 WBZT. We're back. So this goes on and on again. I mean, there was a, there are so many of these. Mary Dove of Brooklyn, New York, uh, you know, she strengthened the case against Citibank. Uh, her original bar- balance five years ago with Citibank was 35000 and change. She paid a total of $15,000 and her current balance is thirty two five. I mean, the fact that banks can charge this type of interest on student loans is completely unethical. It's like it's a credit card debt. And on April 25th of last year, Justin Kuhn, a law school graduate, filed a class action lawsuit against Citibank in federal court in Manhattan, also naming its former subsidiary, which is the Student Loan Corporation and Discover Bank, uh, which the company uh, sold part of its student loan operations to in 2010. And he told the court that in uh, November of 07, he consolidated four private student loans with SLC, which Citibank owned, and subsequently his complaint charged that the defendants engaged in a scheme to collect additional interest at the expense of borrowers of the student loans. He said that the firms were deceiving borrowers um, into believing that their monthly payments have been reduced because of an interest rate reduction when in fact the vast majority of the reduction was attributable to a reduction in the amount of principal being repaid each month. And that resulted of thousands of dollars and interest being paid by the borrowers. I mean, this is a huge scam. And he said that after he consolidated his loans, he started out with a balance of close to 100 grand with an annual fixed rate of 9.55%. And, you know, of course, Citibank is borrowing from the Fed at a rate of less than 1%. So Kuhn began making payments of uh, 850 bucks a month through an auto debit program. And then in April of 08, um, he paid down 15,000 of the principal. Then he paid down another 10,000 in 09. And he paid down a total of 25,000. And then Citibank continued to auto debit the 850 a month until January of 2012. And then at that point, Citibank, what did they do? They cut his payments from 845 to 539. And what happens then? They keep cutting it and cutting it. And what happens? The lower payments wind up that the interest goes up. A result is that he's going to pay $71,000 more in interest. I mean, there's something really wrong with this. If you can't discharge these loans in bankruptcy, then you got to go after these private lenders and you got to go, you got to go bust them up and show that they've acted illegally so that perhaps you can get these, uh, get the rates lowered because they've acted illegally. Um, there must be, there's arbitration clauses in these agreements. Anyway, you need to read her work. It's really amazing she sheds light on the whole scam you know think that these universities are getting you know tons of money and that they're putting it into physical plant improving the quality of their course offerings and all of this stuff no what they're doing is making low interest mortgages and interest free loans to the big shots in the universities that they're eventually going to forgive these loans and let them uh, 
let them off the hook. Just make them a gift. She's exposed NYU for doing it. She's been doing this over and over again. She's doing incredible work. Work that used to be done by the so-called mainstream, main sleaze media that they no longer do any longer. That they're the corporate media. They don't do it anymore. I mean, she's got an article here. NYU channels Wall Street. New documents show lavish pay perks and secret deals. And another one, NYU's Gilded Age. Students struggle with debt while vacation homes are lavished on university's elite. And it's it's just incredible what they talk about, where John Sexton, the president of NYU, re- relaxing at his Fire Island beach house, uh, you know, his summer getaway, a rather large, wonderful house. Uh, we learn what he eats for breakfast, black coffee and yogurt, I mean, you look at the house, it's huge. Um, And it's bought complements of financing from NYU, interest-free. And somehow this is right. And, you know, they're doing this for doctors. Uh, These revelations came on top of other recent outrages at the university, such as the purchase of a $6.15 million condo on East 70th Street to house Robert Grossman, dean of the NYU Medical Center and his combined compensation at NYU as of fiscal year ending August 31st, 2011 was three and a half million. Five other doctors at NYU Medical received 10 and a half million in compensation. So there's something really wrong. And and the excesses at NYU under under this guy Sexton came partially to light during the uh, confirmation hearings of Jack Lew, who was Obama's treasury secretary. Uh, As NYU's chief operating officer, Lew received partially forgivable mortgage loans from NYU of $1.4 million to buy a luxury home in Riverdale, and he got severance pay of $685,000, even though he had voluntarily left to join Citigroup. I mean, this is the kind of scam that's going on. We're all being scammed by these schools. You know, you think, oh, education. We got to put as much money as we can into education because it's for the kids. You know, don't kid yourself. It's not for the kids. It's for, you just follow the money. It's for the elites. The elites are cashing in on this stuff. This is a scam just like any other scam. Higher education. The good thing is the internet they're going to get an internet wake-up call because Georgia Tech, you know, the $16,000 MBA online, you know, $16,000, actually it wasn't MBA, it was a computer science degree. That's what it's coming down to. That's what we're going to have. And it's going to put these SOBs out of work, out of business. Now, maybe they'll find another scam. Maybe they'll find another way to do it. I wouldn't doubt it for a minute. They're going to do it. I mean, there's always another scam going on out there. There's always another way to do it. Let's face it. I mean, that's what keeps these guys up at night, coming up with a new scam. But at some point, the money is going to run out. The collapse is going to be happening. That's what's, that's what's going on now. And the gravy train is coming to an end. The sooner it does, the happier we're going to be. You know... NYU is the second largest real estate owner in New York City. They've got $3.3 billion in residential and commercial holdings. They don't pay any taxes on it. And, you know, she's talking about how she emailed a law professor, Jeffrey Miller, who had a home in New Rochelle financed by the NYU School of Law Foundation, and asked why he didn't simply use the NYU Federal Credit Union as many other faculty have done to finance their homes. And the credit union's website indicates that it offers a full range of home mortgages in the tri-state area all over the place. And she also asked uh, Miller if his home loan was forgivable. And Miller responded that he wouldn't provide personal financial information over the internet. Of course, I wasn't, she wasn't asking sensitive things, but you know, this is a scam and This needs to be exposed. This is pure corruption. 
and it all needs to be be outed. We need to know why these people are being given these gifts and why students are going into hock basically to provide these gifts to undeserving faculty members and elites that run these institutions. It's corrupt, it's wrong, it needs to be stopped now. This is Kerry Lutz on the Financial Survival Network. It's been another Triple Lutz Report, signing off. This show was brought to you by PrepareWise. They're the leading producer of certified GMO-free, chemical-free, organic emergency preparedness food. I buy all my emergency preparedness food there, and you should too. I like the 183-serving Mega Sample Pack. It's an amazing value. It's $280. That's less than $2 per meal. Go to preparewise.com. That's preparewise.com and use the code LUTZ, L-U-T-Z, to get free shipping and much more. The Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at financialsurvivalnetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network.